Good morning, guys. It is Tuesday, November 28th, 2023. This is Bathrobe Business. I'm Georgie Oganov. I got my coffee, and let's get into the news. Uh, it's actually a pretty quiet day for news. All is quiet on the Western Front. I even struggled to find anything interesting worth talking about. Um, the stock market is fairly muted. Uh, Dow in the pre-open is down just uh, 20 points. Uh, S&P is down 8. Uh, NASDAQ 33. Uh, I will mention my favorite indicator, gold, as mentioned yesterday, it's still above 2,000. Remember, gold, I consider a, a thermometer for how the economy is doing. If gold is high, that means the economy has a temperature. Something could be going wrong in it. It doesn't mean that it has to be something drastic. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, there's going to be a recession or anything like that. It just means that there's something going on in the economy that's not being talked about that could be hindering uh, the future. So it's just a headwind. Um, and gold is above 2000 still. It's at $2,012 right now in the pre-market. Let me actually refresh it and see if it's changed. It's actually at 2016. Um, so that's that's high. Uh, it is at a six-month high, and it is uh, high. 2000 is high in general for gold. So it's something to watch. Um, it could mean a lot of different things. I think that it means that inflation is running hotter than what is being reported. I think that in the uh, the first quarter, we're, uh, in, I guess in the first quarter, we're going to get reports from the fourth quarter that inflation is higher than anticipated. I think it's going to mean Fed hikes, uh, federal rate hikes. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that, but I keep reporting on it because I don't feel like anybody talks about gold as uh, a barometer or temperature for how the economy is doing. Uh, the rest of the market is pretty quiet. Uh, Xi'an, the Chinese discounter, I think that's how you say it. I, I have heard people say it different ways, but I think it is Xi'an is filing for a US IPO for $66 billion. Um, Goldman, Morgan uh, are gonna be the underwriters. I think this is a, a, a interesting story simply because we used to talk about China in almost a secondhand way, like as if they were producing lesser than products, knockoffs, but more and more they're invading our day-to-day -day activities. So obviously Foxcom, everybody who has an iPhone, anyone that has any phone is more than likely produced in China. There's literally no phone that is produced in the United States. But we consider those American products, uh, American brands that just happen to be manufactured in China. Whereas now we're seeing more and more Chinese brands, Chinese products making their way into the market. The biggest, of course, being TikTok, which has changed the game in multiple ways and now maybe changing the game in the fact that it has TikTok shop. Uh, that's become a major story. Uh, it's kind of being quieted by the fact that not a lot of outlets are talking about it. But TikTok shop, shop is growing steadily. I have seen articles here and there that Amazon is concerned, but I don't think it's being talked about as much as it should be. I don't really use TikTok shop, but my girlfriend does, so therefore I do. So this Christmas, we've bought probably a dozen different gifts through TikTok shop that have come up on her feed. And it's all good products. Uh, it's all probably coming straight from China anyway. And it's a great tool for discovering products because, as we know, TikTok's algorithm is actually very robust. It works very well. And so we have TikTok. We have Xi'an. Timu is another big one. Wish was always there, but uh, Wish, again, was an American company. And uh, TikTok, uh, Timu is now just a Chinese company that has invaded the U.S. So here's another company that is doing very well in the United States. We ourselves, in our business, in one of our businesses, in our dental laboratory, we are purchasing printers made entirely by Chinese companies. So it's a Chinese company, Chinese-owned, uh, manufactured in China, and just serviced here in the United States. It's a fantastic product. It's Hay Gears. I highly recommend it. We purchased one this year, and we're actually purchasing another right now. We should get the second one before the year is out. I can't speak enough about how well the product works. Uh, so China is not what it used to be. I think that there's a lot of sentiment that China's best days are behind it. I don't think it is. I think China's best days are still ahead of it because now we're in the stage of innovation. They are no longer just copying products or just being the offshore manufacturer. They are actually producing real products that are making their way here. They are now setting trends. They are now uh, creating products that we want to use. So that's something to keep an eye on. I think that is a pretty big story. Uh, $66 billion valuation is nothing to scoff at. Uh, the other one I th found kind of funny, uh, Virgin Atlantic. Uh, sorry, I'm going to take a sip of coffee. 
Miles Gendrak. Virgin Atlantic's uh, Boeing 787 is taking a trip from London to Heathrow, uh, no, from uh, London to Heathrow to New York uh, using entirely 100% sustainable fuel. I didn't know what that was supposed to mean, so I dug into the articles a little bit, and it looks like 88% of the fuel that they're using comes from fats, so refined fat waste, and 12% is from synthetic uh, kerosene all made from plant sugars. So all of this fuel is 100% quote unquote renewable. I think it's interesting. I think it's also a bit of an optics uh, virtue signal. Uh, nobody's talking about how expensive this fuel is. I think if you were to run the numbers, you would find that this flight probably costs them more than a standard jet fuel flight. But uh, I think we're gonna see a lot more of this where a lot of companies, and we already see it, it's nothing new. A lot of companies will do something for the optics of it despite the fact that it's not actually sustainable as a business model because for one, the supply chain doesn't exist for it. Supply chains are actually incredibly important that nobody ever talks about. It, it's the biggest hindrance to manufacturing or to any sort of sustainability. There's not a great supply chain for fats to come in and be refined and kerosene to be coming in and produced from sugars in order to supply as many jet fuel stations as we need. But even if there were, the cost of it is probably astronomically high. It's probably much higher than traditional jet fuel. This is one of the biggest problems with renewables nobody talks about is the actual monetary cost is usually higher. There's these weird numbers you hear about that, oh, it's now cheaper to get energy from solar panels than it is from oil or wind turbines or the cheapest alternative to oil. If you actually dig into these numbers, it doesn't make any sense. The, the, the cost of manufacturing isn't actually factored into a lot of those calculations. So people will say, oh, this energy source is cheaper, but what they did was cover up the manufacturing side of it and how much energy input it took to create the wind turbine or the solar panel or the mining operations for the lithium within the solar panel. And all of a sudden it's not even close to being net neutral, it's net negative, especially over the lifespan of the product of the solar panel of the wind turbine. And this is no different. If you were to dig into the numbers, I'm sure you would see that this is no way sustainable. This is just a virtue signal. It's an optics thing. They're just doing this for uh, the attention. It's Virgin, so it's not a surprise. Virgin Galactic, Richard Branson, they're known for big publicity stunts. This is very much in their wheelhouse, very much on brand. Um, next story is about uh, Wells Fargo. Nothing crazy there, but Wells Fargo is talking about more volatility in the market. I will read this article, it's from CNBC, uh, and it's talking about what will happen with the S&P in 2024. Uh, I'm gonna read this uh, quote verbatim. So it's talking about the VIX, uh, the, VIX the volatility index. It, uh, the quote is, VIX is up 13. Every time we've gone into a new year with the VIX at 13, we've seen spikes. We've uh, seen the equity market pull back and just not great, not a great setup into 2024. So the, because there's a lot of volatility heading into the year, they expect it to continue. This specific article is about the S&P and how you might see volatility in the S&P. But here's the other quote I really wanna read. As long as the cost of capital stays high, it's really hard for me to get into a much higher price target for the S&P. So uh, this is where it is interesting because the cost of capital is finally coming in to choke Wall Street a bit, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, this is kind of the original plan was to slow inflation was to raise interest rates. And we're now we're finally seeing it hit Wall Street in a sustainable and very negative kind of manner. Why this is good is because it can actually be used to stop inflation. This is actually gonna help control the growth of the stock market because so much of the stock market's growth is just based off of valuations. They get cheap capital, they value a company at X, and because the company is valued at that, they can borrow infinitely. They can build companies entirely based on debt choke out uh, Main Street and or just create artificial valuations that make no sense and that makes the stock market go up, in turn making everything else go up. So this is actually a good thing. The fact that cost of capital is going up is actually going to spur a lot of more Main Street growth and it's also going to spur some innovation from some of these companies that for a long time, for decades now, have done nothing but just borrowed, borrowed, borrowed and created artificial valuations. So I think this is actually a fantastic story. This is one of the few stories that I think may, means a lot that uh, the cost of capital is actually starting to pressure Wall Street. Uh, last story I'll just talk about is uh, Argentinian President Mele. Uh, I believe that is how you say your name. I've been saying Mele, but I think it is Mele. 
so his he had an interesting uh, interview I listened to yesterday with Tucker Carlson. Um, it was just uh, the reason I say Tucker Carlson is because he seems to be the only one he did a full sit down interview to, with in English. Uh, I highly recommend you guys check it out. Nothing in it was uh, that was said was outlandish or anything we haven't heard before, but it was the first time I actually heard him uh, in English uh, talking to uh, a U.S. reporter. So I'm going to put a link to that in the, the description. I just, it's only a 20-minute interview. I think it's interesting. It's bit, it's pretty political. I mean, it's Tucker Carlson. He takes a political stance on it. The entire interview is pretty much anti-socialism. But I think it's very interesting to listen to just to get his first-hand account of what's going on in the country. So I will post that into the description. Uh, and that's the last story of the day. Um, so I'm going to be heading off to work. I uh, hope you guys have a great day, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.